Yeah, uh, good afternoon, uh, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, my name is uh, Epa Utabajimana. I work for the United Nations Peacekeeping or, um, uh, Stabilization Mission in Democratic Republic of Congo. Um, I work as a GIS officer and a team lead of uh, the GIS unit there. And um, this afternoon, I'm happy to share with you um, our experience on um, the testing and um, uh, uh, the testing of the SMASH as a, one of the open uh, source uh, GIS tools that we been uh, trying to test and also implement. It is uh, an ongoing process. And um, yeah, I'm happy to be uh, with you in the next few minutes on this subject. A uh, few points that I would like to share with you include uh, the project background, uh, operationalization, uh, the targeted benefits and uh, some challenges and uh, lessons learned. Um, before this um, project on the testing of uh, uh, SMASH as one of the open source uh, yeah, GIS data collection, um, there was a field operational requirement that we were not um, uh, uh, fulfilling uh, um, as we wanted because of uh, mainly uh, the uh, fact that uh, we were using proprietary software which um, requires uh, a number of you know, licenses and applies uh, costs, but also the nature of the, um, the, the peacekeeping mission um, area of operation where we have different uh, actors and uh, different uh, stakeholders um, who go to different locations, different places that we as a GIS professionals uh, due to a number of factors such as uh, security related, we do not reach. And therefore, the use of open source uh, tools like this, uh, we felt it was uh, an opportunity for us to adopt, first to test and then to adopt so that we can include um, a, a wide user community in the data collection uh, to improve our, our, our services and uh, 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 the efficiency of the uh, support we provide to the uh, uh, UN peacekeeping missions, but also to our partners because we uh, we also support uh, partners in, 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 in terms of uh, providing uh, updated maps and uh, also data. So um, some of these operational require requirements included the fact that you know, uh, some of the clients used to come to us uh, asking uh, us to, to have a, a kind of you know, um, design the form to collect the data on uh, the point of interest, specific field, uh, you know, uh, surveys, uh, the patrols, road conditions, and here by road conditions, um, there are two aspects. There is a, what we call physical condition, how the road looks like, but also um, uh, uh, another aspect is uh, uh, when, for example, the road is, is blocked by maybe armed groups, uh, that is, there is a way we, 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 we rank uh, uh, those, those, those kind of conditions. And this is very important for, for peacekeepers and other humanitarian actors to, to have this kind of information. So this was one of operational requirements that we could not um, uh, uh, fulfill uh, using only the proprietary software because it involved licenses and uh, so on. So the other 
type of requirement was uh, like a kind of quick capture uh, where, for example, uh, we were asked to collect uh, location photo only data, uh, accent, uh, uh, accident sites, uh, crimes hotspot, and also tracks and trades mapping. So, uh, so as a part of the tools that were uh, uh, selected, especially for the MONUSCO, uh, uh, this uh, um, smash was, was the one uh, that was selected and uh, we conducted a, a pilot project on that. Um, the roadmap we took uh, is like this. Um, once we, it was decided that we use this marsh as a, as, a, as, a, as a tool for data collection, we piloted the, the project. And uh, in this uh, pilot project, we, we selected use cases based on those uh, uh, um, operational requirements. And we ended up with, uh, you know, uh, uh, assessing this uh, um, tool and generating uh, an evaluation report in which uh, there were lessons learned and uh, recommendations uh, on how oh, this could be uh, adopted within the UN system and what could be uh, required to make this uh, uh, operational. The, uh, the detailed report on how we proceeded is uh, found on this link. Uh, if you would like to, to, to read more about it, you can, uh, you can get it there. And um, this report, uh, we shared the, uh, the, uh, the, uh, the final results uh, with in, in, uh, during the UN Open uh, uh, GIS Mobile Solution Working uh, Group Symposium. And uh, one of the key uh, uh, um, recommendations was to have uh, a centralized data server in our promises, in the UN promises, and uh, this, is, uh, uh, this was uh, accepted and um, uh, a centralized infrastructure at UN uh, Global Service Center was established and um, uh, that uh, led us again to testing that uh, centralized infrastructure and see how uh, this uh, uh, mobile data uh, uh, tool uh, is, whether it is working uh, effectively or not. So, um, Currently, uh, we are at uh, the last two stages. Uh, the first one um, is where we are uh, trying to, uh, to, to collect the non-confidential data because during the, uh, the pilot project, um, there were concerns uh, from some, some of our clients questioning about the confidentiality of the data. And um, the, 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 there was, uh, uh, during that, the pilot project, there was no uh, uh, solution to that. But currently, uh, our counterparts from UNGC are uh, uh, helping us to, to set up uh, this infrastructure and make sure that uh, 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 even um, confidential data will be collected and will be consumed with only those uh, uh, data owner and uh, other uh, uh, who will be given uh, access to. So um, uh, also at this uh, stage, uh, especially stage seven, there is uh, going to uh, uh, to be uh, uh, an integration of Azure ID, uh, which will help, which is uh, part of the UN uh, policy to enable uh, 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 signing one uh, single signing uh, option. And uh, 
once that integration is, is completed, uh, uh, the uh, confidential data will also uh, be uh, uh, collected and stored in the, the central server. Now, the process for the, the last two stages that I, uh, I just mentioned uh, within the UN um, context, it has uh, each of the, 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 the those uh, stages, six and seven, they go three uh, different stages. Uh, there is a uh, testing the environment, which is uh, made of the, uh, uh, you know, or testing the, 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 the setup environment in a, in a closed, in a closed environment where we, we test the data. Once that uh, test is done, and then we do uh, assess the architecture and uh, security related aspect. Um, and once that one is, is, is completed, uh, um, configuration uh, in the production environment takes place. So uh, from uh, stage six, where uh, non-confidential data is, is, is uh, being uh, collected or can be collected, we go through uh, these uh, three stages and the same will take place uh, in, a, in a stage seven. So currently, um, clients are um, collecting data using this tool, I mean uh, Smash, but without a central server. So uh, it's uh, very important for us um, uh, to, uh, uh, to, to note that uh, in order to have this uh, uh, system fully operational, uh, there is a need to complete this, uh, this uh, stage. Um, so far, in a nutshell, uh, what has been completed is uh, the infrastructure for production environment and architecture review. Ongoing is uh, security assessment and procurement of Azure AD authentication and uh, each of these two uh, ongoing uh, activities uh, correspond to the last two uh, stages. Um, the infrastructure architecture is, uh, uh, looks like this from this diagram. Uh, basically, the, the idea is that um, any new uh, uh, mobile user need to, uh, okay, will collect the data, um, online or offline, but uh, he or she must be registered by the system, uh, the system administrator, GSS uh, administrator. He register the new user and also upload the, the project files. And from then, the user can start collecting the data either offline or, or online and the data is being uh, 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 saved in the, uh, uh, I mean, uh, in, in the central server using a survey server and Postgre uh, DB. And it can also be uh, uh, consumed through GeoServer. And uh, the, the other aspect is the Azure authentication that, uh, that um, is, is, is being uh, um, uh, e evaluated and is going to be uh, 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 integrated to allow single sign-in uh, um, option. Um, the benefits um, uh, that I could share with you uh, uh, is mainly uh, based on the operational area where internally we have uh, about 17,000 uh, users whom uh, we can target to be part of the data collection, but also to benefit from the services that we derive from that uh, uh, huge uh, uh, data collection uh, uh, exercise. And um, in that, uh, we will be uh, uh, um, encouraging uh, 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 a participatory data collection, analysis, and visualization. 
the other uh, benefit is uh, when you look at from the cost associated to the to the uh, uh, um, proprietary software, we could uh, uh, say that uh, um, there will be less proprietary licenses and then uh, less money. And uh, also the other advantage is that once fully uh, implemented, um, uh, we believe that in the next one to two years, at least 50% uh, of the data that are required uh, will be made available to support the decision making. Uh, some of the challenges, um, yeah, one, uh, somehow I mentioned it, was the lack of a centralized data server, because when we were, we were piloting the, the, uh, the, the project from the beginning, um, we didn't have a centralized data server, and uh, we had to, uh, to like, uh, uh, buy space from Microsoft Azure, and that is where we did uh, we did uh, uh, the testing, but uh, as, I, as I mentioned earlier, uh, uh, some clients were questioning about the data, the data security. So that is why we recommended to have uh, uh, um, a centralized uh, data server within the UN premises. Um, so that one was... Um, was sorted. Uh, the other challenge is uh, related to network connectivity in remote areas. Uh, I, I, I actually, uh, though we are uh, we are recommending that you know uh, uh, mission leadership or uh, yeah, mission leadership could uh, identify and engage a suitable uh, internet service provider. That is not that easy uh, in the context we are working in. You have uh, these kind of challenges. I don't know um, the kind of technology that can be, you know, uh, proposed to overcome uh, this situation. Uh, the other challenge is uh, an undefined support model. Here, uh, I mean. Um, the open source uh, JS initiative is something that uh, is, uh, was introduced recently in the UN peacekeeping operations or in the UN community. And um, uh, 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 our experience was that, you know, uh, working with our, our, our colleagues from uh, um, the other offices like uh, UNGC, uh, Brindisi, New York, it, it was not the, in, in, you know, there were some kind of uh, uh, bumpy uh, uh, ways that uh, uh, were related to the fact that it was uh, something new that was being tested. So that was being introduced. Uh, uh, for, for example, there were some uh, security related uh, you know, regulations where uh, uh, you are not, uh, were not allowed to install these tools in the UN network. So um, that we had to, uh, to find a way uh, out. The other uh, challenge is uh, uh, what I call uh, discontinuous user assignments, especially the uniformed personnel. Uh, these are the military, uh, the police, uh, uh, military observers, troops. These uh, come in the peacekeeping operations for a specified period of time. That does not exceed one year. And, um, these uh, uh, create a challenge in a, whereby uh, um, once they are trained to use this kind of tools, uh, uh, they start contributing, but after the, uh, the, uh, the assignment, one year, they, they leave, and you find you are, you are obliged like, to start from zero uh, with the new, uh, with the new uh, comers who most of the time they come, uh, there is no overlap 
they come when the other uh, have left. That is the nature of the, 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 the peacekeeping operations. So um, we thought it would be good to set up strategies for continuous awareness and use of the, the tool by, the, by equipping the, the sections, giving them the, the tool and also the, uh, the devices that could, uh, uh, they could um, uh, be made available to them and also providing uh, continuous training whenever there are new uh, uh, comers, we make sure that they are given proper training to, to, uh, uh, to, to ensure business continuity in this regard. Yeah, and uh, that's, uh, that's the end. And, uh, I finally want to thank my uh, colleague and team members who uh, helped to, 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 to put up the presentation, but mainly uh, who helped to to, to test this, uh, this uh, uh, smash tool and um, collaborating with the UNGC team. Uh, I, I thank them very much and also uh, the New York, uh, our leadership. Thank you very much and uh, look forward to <laughs> continue using smash and um, <laughs> UN open source uh, uh, tools that are available. To, to improve uh, the support we give to our clients in the mission. Thank you very much.